Hello and welcome to Current Affairs on JTV. Today I'm joined by Avner Gavariahu, um, who's currently based in the US and is the US coordinator for the organization Breaking the Silence, and here in the JTV studio with Nouru Salik, who's a former Israeli soldier and a current advocate for Israel. Uh, now the reason we're doing things in a rather strange way today is because Avner did not wish to be interviewed concurrently with Nouru, so do bear with us while we flip between the two. Okay, Avner, Breaking the Silence, what's your goal? The goal of breaking the silence is um, very simple, um, to speak about what's happening in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip under Israeli control, where a group of former Israeli soldiers who all served in the IDF, and we want to break the silence about the prolonged military occupation that we were part of and that our um, um, government is continuing. But to what end? Well, I, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. Till, till the Israeli occupation ends. Okay, I get that. And, and you want to obviously influence the Israeli political scene. Why then is there a US coordinator for breaking the silence? What are you doing in the US? I'm here pursuing my master's and that's what brought me here. Uh, breaking the silence does not have an office in, in New York. And, you know, the fact that I'm here is because that I'm uh, studying. Um, but um, um, what we try to do when uh, we have an opportunity like this, when I'm here in the States or when we have a representative visiting the UK, for example, then um, we always try to reach out to communities that we believe uh, are crucial uh, um, for this discourse. And part of these communities, and this is part of the reason that uh, uh, we're having this conversation, is speaking to Jewish communities around the world who do not live in Israel but care deeply about Israel. But there's another audience you're also playing to, isn't there? Your donors. And you have a lot of foreign funding, who, who are not Jewish organizations, governments, um, other charities. You also speak to them, don't you? Yeah, I mean, um, we, we, we also get funding from Western democracies who are close allies to Israel. Um, and we're very proud of that funding. And what we're asking to do is separate Israel from the occupation. We believe Israel not only has a right to exist, right, but we're going to do whatever we can for Israel to strive and prosper. But in order to do that, definitely today in 2016, we believe that loving Israel means hating the occupation. The support that we think Israel should get from Jews around the world, but not only from anybody around the world, is say, of course, Israel has a right to exist. But isn't it? Let's but isn't it? Fight about 1948. But isn't Let's it true? About 1967. Isn't it that's true? The area, because that's the area that we believe is questionable and we have to decide what we want. But and you've just stated a political today, line. Let me let me stop you for one second. Let me stop you for one second. You're making a very political point. It's, isn't it true? It's your politics that's driving what you're doing, not the actuality of things. So let me give you a specific issue to address. My last point. The organization NGO Monitor has looked through some of your funding. Some of your funding was tied specifically to you having to obtain negative testimonies about the Israeli army. Isn't that correct? Breaking the silence started in 2004 and we've been around for over a decade. Our mission is, our mission is, as we've always stated it, is to meet soldiers, publish their testimonies and talk about it. So I never understood this revelation of NGO Monitor, for example, saying that we got funding for doing what we always say that we're doing. You yeah, know? but it's so quite you simple. If you're I would given... Maybe agree with you, I would maybe agree with you that the way that, that they phrased that sentence wasn't smart because it's silly to think that we have to uh, uh, get specific kind of testimonies in order to do our work. We just have to listen to the soldiers. And if you guys back in the UK, or if my government back in Israel will just listen to the soldiers, we believe we could move forward instead of ignoring the reality. Okay, Avner, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay, uh, Noru, well, we've heard what uh, Avner said. He said, go and speak to soldiers. Well, you're a former soldier. What do you make of that? Well, you know, Alan, only a few days ago, I was listening to this uh, young chap young officer, um, Israeli military doctor, uh, and he was telling us how 
uh, in Gaza. Uh, he treated in the field and helped save the life uh, of, a, of a Hamas terrorist, you know, who had just attacked uh, an Israeli force and got wounded in the process. He also told us how um, he, in the midst of the of the war, he helped a, a Palestinian woman deliver her child, her, her baby. Um, and that wasn't an anonymous testimony of the, of the type breaking the silence is peddling. Uh, the chap was uh, standing in front of perhaps 200 people and telling us his story. Can I, can I just interrupt you? So most of the testimonies of breaking the silence are anonymous? All of them are anonymous. All of them, okay. But there's no uh, way to uh, identify the soldier or the exact uh, location and so on and so forth. Okay. Okay, so it's anecdotal is what you're saying, and this is not verifiable. It's not verifiable. We don't know uh, whether um, those testimonies exist at all. Uh, I mean, uh, other than being uh, written uh, in a report, we don't know uh, if that's what the soldier really said. Uh, we don't know whether that's all that that soldier said uh, or just selected uh, passages from what he said. Um, there's no way to verify any of that. Okay, Avnon um, was seemingly suggesting that there's a policy from on high to commit human rights abuses. When you were a soldier, was that the case? Not at all, not at all. We, were, uh, we never went into um, uh, the West Bank. I served a lot in the West Bank, including during the Intifadas. Uh, we never went there without uh, having a few days of uh, preparation first. We were, in, we were instructed uh, very clearly in the rules of uh, opening fire and how to use the non-lethal uh, means of, of controlling uh, the crowd when needed and, and um, things like that. Uh, I've never come across a, an order or an instruction that I would consider morally problematic. Uh, if, if I had come against something like that, I would have challenged it. And Israeli uh, soldiers, believe you me, uh, challenge the, uh, such, such things. The very comrades of, of uh, Avner Gvaryahu have called some of his um, uh, stories Shia lies. Mm. Uh, the people who served with him in the same unit. Um, now I'm sure uh, I'm sure Avner doesn't intend to lie. I'm sure he believes in what he's saying. You know, some people, uh, when they're driven by a particular ideology, by a particular political agenda, they will persuade themselves uh, of certain things. I mean, there are, things, there are people who still believe that 9-11 was the work of the Mossad or 7-7 was the work of the MI5. People who choose to believe can uh, can believe in, in uh, absurd um, uh, things that, that we normal people would consider uh, absurd. And does it therefore worry you that uh, so much of their funding comes from foreign sources? Well, uh, it's interesting that uh, he said we're funded by democracies. Um, I'm going to show you here that it's not just democracies and, and in fact one of the the biggest uh, donors um, is a Palestinian organization. Uh, I, I have it here, you see. This is a Palestinian organization. Uh, they distribute funding, and one of the organizations they choose to fund is Breaking the Silence. Now, what do they find them for? They find them in order to document human rights and international humanitarian law violations by Israel and Gaza. Just to remind you that Breaking the Silence recently published a report about uh, Israeli army misbehavior in, in Gaza. So this is the organization who paid quite a sizable amount of money uh, to Breaking the Silence to document those kind of violations. Now, I don't know about you, Alan, but for me, when a Palestinian organization uh, funds or, or pays money to document Israeli violations, uh, it sounds like very fishy business. It sounds like political warfare and not uh, real human rights activism.
On that point, Nora, we have run out of time. So I want to thank you for joining me here in the studio. Thank you all for joining us at home and look forward to seeing you again for Current Affairs on JTV.